Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, robotics, optimization and applied mathematics. This tutorial is part 3 of the tutorial on matrix exponential and control. In this particular tutorial we will learn how to calculate matrix exponential by hand. We consider the following example. Our matrix A has this form 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. And we want to compute the matrix exponential of A times T, where T is time. To compute this matrix exponential, we'll be using the inverse Laplace approach that I explained in part 1 and part 2 of this video tutorial. The links to both parts are given in the description below this video tutorial. The matrix exponential AT is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of this matrix SI minus A inverse where S is the complex Laplace variable. The matrix SI minus A inverse is called the resolvent matrix. First we need to compute this matrix and then we need to take the inverse Laplace transform of our resolvent matrix. Let's first compute SI minus A. We have S0, 0, S minus, here's our A, 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. Consequently, our resolvent matrix has the following form. S minus 1, 2, and over here we have S plus 3. The next step is to compute the inverse of this matrix. To compute the inverse, we will be using this simple formula. Let P be a matrix with the entries P11, P12, P21, and P22. Then, P inverse is 1 over determinant of P multiplying this matrix. Over here we need to switch the positions of P22 and P11. Consequently we have P22 and over here we have P11 and we change the signs of P12 and P21. Consequently we have minus P12 and over here we have minus P21. Let's apply this formula to our case. First, we need to compute the determinant of SI minus A. Determinant of SI minus A is, let's compute it, S multiplying S plus 3 plus 2. And this becomes S squared plus 3S plus 2. Let us factorize this polynomial. You can easily sh it can be easily shown that this polynomial can be factorized as follows. S plus 1 multiplying S plus 2. How do I know that? Well, you can compute the zeros of this polynomial. So what are the zeros? S1, 2, R. Let's see. Minus 3 plus minus square root of 9 minus 4ac minus 8 divided by 2a divided by 2 and obviously the zeros are minus 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2 and the first zero is obviously let's see minus 2 and the second zero is obviously minus 1 on the basis of these zeros, we can factorize our polynomial. Good. So our determinant is s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. And over here we'll write 1 over 
s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. Okay, that was the most difficult part. What do we have over here? Let's see. s and s plus 3 should flip. Here we have s plus 3. Here we have s. And these two terms should change the sign. We have 1 and we have minus 2. Let us write this matrix in a more nicer form. Over here, I've wrote again my matrix, and I need to multiply the terms in order to have the explicit form of this matrix. Let's see what happens over here. Over here, I have S plus 3 divided by S plus 1 multiplying S plus 2. Over here, I have 1 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. Over here, I have minus 2 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. And over here, I have s over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. And I need to close my matrix. Next, I need to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this matrix. That is, I need to compute this expression. Inverse. To compute the inverse Laplace transform, I need to compute the inverse Laplace transform of all the matrix entries. So let's do that. Let's compute the inverse Laplace transform of this entry. s plus 3 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. To compute this inverse Laplace transform, we'll be using the cover-up method and partial fraction expansion. Let's write the term over here. s plus 3 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. The goal is to express this term as the sum of some coefficient c1 over s plus 1 plus some coefficient c2 over s plus 2. So, how do we find the coefficients c1 and c2? Here's the general idea. c1 is this expression over here. Let's type it. s plus 3 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2 multiplying s plus 1. And after that, we need to evaluate the resulting expression at the pole corresponding to C1, and the pole is minus 1. So let's see what do we get. Over here and over here, these two terms cancel, so we have S plus 3 over S plus 2 evaluated at S is equal to minus 1. And we obtain over here in the numerator we have 2, and in the denominator, we have obviously 1, so we have 2. That was our C1. How about C2? Let's compute it over here. C2, in a similar fashion, is our original expression, s plus 3 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. And be careful over here. We need to multiply this expression by s plus 2 and we need to evaluate the result at s is equal to minus 2. Let's do that and let's see the result. Obviously, we will have s plus 3 over s plus 1 evaluated at s is equal to minus 2. And as the result, we obtain 1 over minus 1. And that's minus 1. Good. So, we can write this term like this. Let's do it over here. 
continue, we have 2 multiplying 1 over s plus 1 plus, and we have to be actually very careful here since we need to add the minus sign, minus 1 over 1 over s plus 2. Consequently, the inverse Laplace transform of this term over here, that is, this expression will be equal to, let's see, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is e to the minus t, and we have the coefficient 2 multiplying. So we have 2 times e to the minus t. How about this coefficient over here and this expression? We have minus, what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2? It's obviously e to the power minus 2t. Okay, so we obtained the first expression. To make this video tutorial as clear as possible, I reorganized the previous page. Here's our original resolvent matrix, and here are the results. And we will enter the results over here. Here is the first term we computed. That is, this term over here is the inverse Laplace transform of the term given over here. Let's continue with this term over here. We need to compute the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2. Again, we need to use the partial fraction expansion. We need to expand this term. Let's do that. 1 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2 can be represented as some constant c1 over s plus 1. And let me just nicely write this term. s plus 1 plus some constant c2 over s plus 2. Let's compute c1 and c2. C1 is obviously this expression over here, 1 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2 times s plus 1 and evaluated at s is equal to the pole. The pole is minus 1. Let's see what happens over here. This is obviously 1 over s plus 2 evaluated at s is equal to minus 1, and let's see what do we get. We have 1. Okay, perfect. How about the second term? How about c2? The term c2 is equal to 1 over s plus 1 multiplying s plus 2 multiplied by s plus 2 evaluated at s is equal to minus 2. And as the result, we obtain 1 over s plus 1 evaluated at s is equal to minus 2. And obviously, this coefficient is equal to 1 over minus 2 plus 1, and that's minus 1. Consequently, we are able to write this term as, let's write it over here, 1 over s plus 1 minus 1 over s plus 2. Consequently, the inverse Laplace transform of this complete expression is e to the power minus t minus e to the power minus 2t. Consequently, over here we will write e minus t minus e minus 2t. And again, notice here that this is the entry 1, 1, and this is the entry 1, 2. That is, these are two separate entries. How about computing the inverse Laplace transform of this term? Obviously, we can follow the same procedure. However, let's see what happens over here. We have minus 2 times this term. Consequently, we'll just multiply this term by minus 2. And as the result, we obtain 2 e to the minus 2t minus 2 multiplying e to the minus t. And finally, we need to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this term over here. First, let's erase this part over here. 
And let's see how to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this term. First of all, we have to notice that this term over here is actually S times this term over here. Since that's the case, we know that the inverse Laplace transform of this term is obtained by taking the first derivative with respect to time of this term over here. To repeat, notice what's happening over here. We have s over s plus 1, s plus 2. And that's precisely equal to this term over here times s. When we have s times something in the complex domain, in the time domain, that's derivative. Consequently, to compute this term, actually the inverse Laplace transform of this term over here, we will take the first derivative of this term. So let's do that. What's the first derivative of this term? It's super easy. It is minus e to the minus t. And what happens over here? We have plus 2e to the minus 2t. And voila! That's the solution. Okay, now the natural question is the following one. How can we verify that we didn't make a mistake? Well, since we live in the 21st century, we can use Python or MATLAB to symbolically compute the matrix exponential. Over here, I will teach you how to compute the matrix exponential by using Python. In particular, I'm using the Python symbolic toolbox. First of all, we need to import the object symbol, matrix, and the function simplify from the Python symbolic toolbox. Let's do that. Then, let's define our symbolic time. The next step is to de define our matrix A times T. Here it is. Let's see our matrix A times T. Perfect. No mistakes. And to compute the matrix exponential of our a times t, we will simply type a t dot exponential, and the result will be returned in this variable x a t. Consequently, let's print that variable, and let's see the result. Okay, here is the result. Let's double check. We have 2 times a to the minus t minus e minus 2 times t. Let's see the result. 2 a to the minus t, here it is, minus e minus 2t. Perfect. How about this term? Let's see. e to the minus t, perfect, minus e minus 2t, perfect. How about the term over here? Let's double check. Here it is, minus 2e to the minus t. Here is this. This is the first term plus 2e to the 2 minus t. Here it is. Perfect. And the final term is minus e to the minus t plus 2e to the minus 2t. Okay, perfect. No mistakes. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.